recording in progress. So welcome back to London Learning Lean. Uh, next week, it's uh, Violessa Hernandez who's going to tell us about ordinals. Uh, but today, we're very pleased to have Jujian Zhang, who's going to tell us about projective, uh, well, projective room. So I hope everyone, everyone can hear me. So um, today's topic is to construct a, a scheme uh, for every graded uh, ring. So since we are constructing a scheme, we first need to we first need to learn what a scheme is. So a scheme in Lin, as everyone can expect, is just a locally ring space such that uh, it's just a locally ring space such that uh, it can be locally covered. Is somebody saying something? Yeah, you. Okay. So it, it is just a locally string, uh, locally ring space, just that it, it has an affine, affine cover. So then, what is a locally ring space? A locally string ring space, as the name speaks for itself, is just a shift space that's uh, uh, that such that for it, for every point, the stock at that point is a local ring. And then a shift space is just a pre-shift space that just happens to be a shift. Then a pre-shift space is just a, a, a topological space, such that there is a there is a pre-shift on that topological space. So to construct uh, the, uh, to construct a scheme for every projective and uh, for, for every uh, for every graded ring, we will need a topology. On, uh, we will need a topology, and we will need a structure sheaf, and we will need a, a proof that uh, the stocks at every point are local rings. And I will be also constructing an affine cover. So first part topology. So given a graded ring that is graded by the natural numbers, we can define its projective spectrum. Uh, we can define the projective spectrum to be uh, the set of all homogeneous pr uh, prime ideals, such that the irrelevant ideal is not the, is not a subset of this idea, the, the homogeneous prime ideals. So we will just call such ideals as relevant homogeneous prime ideals. And then, given any given any set S that is a subset of this greater ring A, the zero locus. Of this uh, of this S is just uh, uh, it's just all the relevant homogeneous prime ideals that are subsets of uh, of X. Then we can see this this zero locus can play as uh, uh, as close as uh, as close as in the topology because the empty the zero locus of the empty set is the whole space, and uh, the, the 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 zero locus of the whole thing is the empty set. And if we have two zero locuses, their union is again another zero locus. And if we have a bunch of zero locuses, the, uh, the intersection will again be another zero locus. Thus, just taking all, all kinds of zero locuses, we, we, can get a, we can get all kinds of close sets. Then taking the complement, we can get a, a topology. This topology is called the, the, the Ruski topology. Yeah, sure. Did you, allow, did you take the S to be homogeneous elements or arbitrary elements? Uh, S is arbitrary. Yeah. And then this topology actually admits a, a very special topological basis. So the basis are the elements of the form, um, uh, are the elements of the form uh, that is this complement of a zero locus of a single Latin set. To see that this is indeed a, a topological basis, we will prove that uh, uh, for, uh, for 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 any open for for any open set O, uh, then there is uh, then then there will be some basic basic open set D, DA such that uh, this basic open set is a subset of this O. Then sing. Then we take a point P since this P is not in the zero locus. It's not in the zero locus of this uh, this S. Then this means that S will not be a subset of uh, of homogeneous ideal P. Then some then some point A uh, of the in, in the graded ring A in capital A will be in S but not in P. Then this means that P will be in this basic open set. So so we get that. Uh, the uh, the basic open set D A is a subset of O if and only if um, the uh, the zero locus of S is a is a subset of the zero locus of Z. This should be singleton set A. 
and then we construct a, a structure sheet on, on this the risky topology. So before we do that, we will introduce a concept called the homogeneous localization. So uh, compared to ordinary localization, we, we, we just localize with respect to an, a prime, homogeneous prime ideal first, then we take all, all, then we take all the elements of degree zero. That means the, uh, the numerator and the denominator will have the same degree. And uh, the notation is we just put a zero on the, on, on the right on the right hand side corner to symbolize that everything here has degree zero. So there are some some implementations possible here. First, we just literally spell out this definition here, saying that there exists something such that blah 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 blah. But uh, this is not very constructive, and uh, to get this end, you will always use uh, you will always use the true static. So it's not very pleasant to work with. The, the other solution suggested by Eric is we can uh, we can come up with a structure which the degree will be part of this structure and uh, we have the numerator and the denominator to be in this uh, in this submodule and uh, and we ask of course we, we have to we have to ask the denominator not to be in the in the P so that otherwise the, the denominator is zero that's a bad thing then we can actually embed this structure in in the localized ring P just by literally uh, uh, dividing numerator by the denominator. Then what we do is we we ask two things in, in the thing are the same if and only if they embed to the to the same fraction in the localized ring. So this way we get a quotient instead of this this not very nice uh, implementation. And uh, then the structure then the structure sheet we define to be for every open set U. The, the sections on U, we take them to be the dependent functions from uh, uh, from uh, from points in U. We call it X, and uh, we ask the destination to be the uh, to, to be the homogeneously localized ring. And uh, we also ask that uh, this is purely for proving the shift condition. We ask that uh, uh, the, the the value of this function has to be locally a fraction. This is exactly like the the, the spec construction. In, and uh, the, the restriction the restriction map will take to be the usual restriction of functions and uh, this is indeed a ring because zero is in the degree zero part one is in the degree zero part and uh, and the constant function one is also just one divided by one locally actually globally is one divided by one and uh, uh, if sx is locally on b is a divided by b and tx is locally uh, on w c divided by d then the function s plus t on on locally on on, on v intersecting w is uh, it's just the addition of two fractions and the multiplication is uh, also on on the, on the intersection is just a multiplication of the fractions and uh, the negation of one function is just on on the on the on on, on v again is just negating the fractions so how do we prove that this is actually a, a sheaf here we use something already in the uh, in MATLAB called a pre-local predicate this looks quite complicated but it actually just means for every point in x we have some kind of constructions and uh, uh and if and if, if we have a bunch of these constructions uh, and we, we have some predicate on, on this uh, constructions we will ask that if u is a subset of v, and uh, uh, actually this is means v is a subset of u because we are taking the opposite, and uh, if and this construction uh, and we have a construction if uh, if it is true on v then it has to be true on, on the subset of v. Yeah. I think quite already. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I. I and there's a family defined on V. Yeah, so in, in our case, we we're taking T to be the homogeneous localized localization construction. Right. T, yeah. And we're saying that the predicate is true for the family F. If you want to deduce. We, we, then we, we need it also to be true that uh, so F restricted to the subset. We also need that to be true. Oh, so U is a subset of V. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, indeed, U is a subset of V. Yeah, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Which yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Uh, this is called pre-local because it is not local yet. A, a local predicate is just a pre-local group. Uh, uh, it's just a pre-local predicate. In which case, you can glue things nicely together. W will they be able to see this this weird 
pencil thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, as long as they cannot see it, it's fine. So the locality here just means. So we're given an open set in in, in X and a bunch of uh, a family of constructions on on, on this uh, on this open set U, and uh, uh, and we ask that for every point in in, in this U, we call it this point X. Then there should be an open neighborhood around this point X, such that. Uh, the open neighborhood again has to be a subset of uh, a subset of U, such that uh, uh, if uh, if if uh, if for every X we can find an open neighborhood uh, where also another con uh, the construction restricted to the open open neighborhood also satisfy the predicate, then we must be able to prove that uh, uh, the, the 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 whole the, the the construction on U is also true. So basically, it means we glue things together. And uh, why do we care about this? Is because for every pre-local predicate, we can get a local predicate for free. This is called Shivify. <laughs> and uh, so in our case, we will take T to be the homogeneous localization. Is this the thing you do twice to make the sheet associated with the That will be the case of if you want to do a sheet on the side, then you have to Shivify twice. In our case, we only do once, that, that will be fine. So, um, uh, yeah, so we take T to be to be the homogeneous localization uh, operator. Should I call it operator? And uh, 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 and the the, uh, the pre-local predicate is just that uh, there exists a degree and uh, a numerator denominator such that locally this denominator is not in the it, 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 such that locally it is well defined and uh, the value is always uh, r divided by s. So this quotient dot mixing is just as we mentioned before. We are taking the homogeneous localization to be a, a satoid and a, and and an equivalence class. So so this after we shiftify that it's it is just exactly what what we wanted. But you don't need to shiftify that. It, uh, here you can see there is no uh, for every x uh, there exists exists a v such that. Uh, Blah 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 blah. Here is everything's global, so we have to shiftify that to to get to to get a local predicate. Actually, we can just write the local the predicate to begin with, but we have one extra we have one extra thing to prove. If we start with a look pre local predicate, this thing will be uh, will be will be automatic. That's why we start with a pre local predicate. Yeah, and uh, so your initial definition globally a fraction on all of you. Yeah, and then we, after we simplify that, it becomes that locally is a is a fraction of things. Yeah, yeah. So so this this is local fraction is just we simplify this this global is fraction thing. And uh, so using using the pre-local predicate and local predicate, we can actually prove that uh, this structure sheaf is a is a this structure pre sheaf is a sheaf of sets. But then there is a, a uh, but then there is another nice theorem saying uh, if a, a pre sheaf of ring is a sheaf, if and only if the underlying pre sheaf of, uh, of the sets is a sheaf. So we can get this for free also. Actually, uh, in MathLib, it is proved more generally if this functor has nice, nice, uh, uh, if this functor has is nice enough, then applying the forgetful functor, you will also get a, a sheaf. Then next, we prove that uh, uh, proj with our the risky topology and our structure sheaf is actually a locally ring space. So we will need to be proving that uh, if we have a point P, then the stock at P is isomorphic to the, to this localized ring. This lo uh, this homogeneous localized ring is always a a, a local ring. It's, it's not very hard to prove. Uh, so. We will be we will be constructing a ring equivalence. So the forward direction, we will be starting with a uh, with a point in a stock, which means it is just a germ of functions. I, I think the term is germ, right? The terminology is a germ of functions. Yeah, yeah and we know that uh, by by the definition of the sheaf, we know that F P on locally is just a, a divided by B. So we send this germ to a divided by B, and uh, when we implement this, you know that for the sheet of function. The O is the sheet of Yeah. And you know enough about it. Yeah. It's not just some black box. Yeah. And uh, this is formally implemented by using the universal property of co limit. This thing is constructed as co limit. The stock is constructed, constructed as a co limit. And uh, uh, 
so so we so we got this 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 ring homomorphism for free. So we don't need to prove that a, a map of addition is addition of map. That kind of thing. And the other direction. So we, given a given a homogeneously localized thing, that is a homogeneously localized a point in a homogeneously localized ring, that is a fraction a divided by b. We just send it to the German function where uh, where the open set is just the basic open set of the denominator, denominator and uh, it is a constant function, uh, always taking value at a divided by b. Actually, it's quite hard to check this thing is actually a ring homomorphism, but luckily we don't need it because we just to check that uh, the backward direction and the forward direction compose the identity is easy enough, but to check this is actually a ring homomorphism is quite hard, but we don't need that, fortunately enough. Because uh, as long as a, a ring homomorphism is bijective, it is always a, an equivalence of rings. So finally, we'll be come to the easy bit. We're constructing an a fun cover. So proj, as we uh, proj can can be covered by basic open sets with actually everything with degree greater than zero. Why do we need to degree greater than zero? That is because we will be using this stupid equality a lot. M equals M minus one plus one. So, so we, so, so it really has to be greater than zero, and it can be covered by, uh, it can be covered by uh, uh, basic open sets of uh, elements with degree greater than zero. This is because all, all our points are relevant. That's that's part of the definition in the in the projective uh, projective spectrum. So that means if P is a point in the proj. Then the, then the irrelevant ideal is not entirely li lies in, in the P. So there will be something uh, in the irrelevant ideal, but not in but but not in P. We just then we just write F uh, as the sum of its coordinates. Then for some then for at least one of the F i, uh, it, it should be it, it should not be in P. And uh, this F i will not be will not be F zero because F zero is always zero. And. Uh, so to prove that uh, this, uh, to prove that we can cover, we will have an F uncover by the, by those uh, basic open sets. We just need to prove that uh, this the proj restricted to uh, restricted to the basic open set uh, as F is always equal to this, the, the the prime spectrum of uh, uh, the homogeneously localized uh, uh, localized ring away from F. So so here. A zero F means uh, uh, you are you are localizing away from F. So so the so, so the denominator is uh, is F to the power of zero, F to the power of one, that kind of stuff. So 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 yeah. So so A because this has degree zero, A has always to be has degree m times i, where we are fixing an F with degree m. And uh, uh, so what so to prove that this uh, these two locally ring space are isomorphic, we need two components. The first one is we need a homeomorphism from the uh, on the topological space. That is, we need to prove that uh, the projective spectrum restricted to to the basic open set is uh, uh, is uh, homeomorphically uh, is homeomorphic to the prime spectrum of the degree zero ring. And then we need to uh, construct an isomorphism from the uh, from the structure from the push forward or pull back. Here is the the term is yeah the push forward of the Project uh, of of the structure shift restricting to the basic open set is isomorphic to the structure shift on the prime spectrum of degree zero ring. So from now on, we'll be always fixing uh, an half in uh, with degree greater than zero. So now we are constructing the forward direction of a homeomorphism. To do that, we uh, to do that, then we need to. Uh, for any for every p in the proj, of course, restricted to the basic open open set, we will need a point in the uh, in in the in in the prime spectrum of degree zero ring. That is, we will need a prime ideal in the in the degree zero ring. So we can define the forward direction. We send this point to to the to the ideal spanned by uh, uh, to the ideal spanned by uh, g over one. And uh, intersecting with this degree zero one, so so we are taking the degree zero part of this uh, uh, of this ideal, and equivalently, we can just say uh, the the ideal spanned by the ideal spanned by the degree zero elements 
uh, where the numerator is in in the in the homogeneous uh, prime ideal p intersecting with uh, intersecting with ami so so this so that means the numerator has degree uh, m times i and the denominator has degree m times i, time, times i. so in, indeed we have a degree zero thing there's a map from aom to a localized p say that again sorry there's a map from A0 F to A localized of P. I would have thought. I'm just wondering if there's a way of doing this without saying span. Can you just push forward and pull back ideals somehow? Is there some ring or morphism somewhere? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure because this degree zero thing is quite annoying. Yeah. Right, but somehow intersecting something with a zero feels like you're pulling back an ideal, and, and span feels like you're pushing forward an ideal. I think uh, in, in the in the formalization, I just write here as ideal.comap or something. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a composite of a map. And a yeah, map. yeah. And uh, so to to say that this H is well defined, we need to check that uh, HP is prime, and we need to check that H, this H is actually continuous. So, so to check, check that HP is prime, we have to say we have to know that this HP is not actually the whole thing, and we have to know if if a product is in HP, then at least one of the uh, one of the element is in HP. So to check that uh, it is not actually the whole thing. So we assume if it, if if it is the whole thing, then the one will be in HP. So we can write one as a uh, since it is in span. So we can write one as a linear combination of uh, or, or linear combination of uh, uh, linear combination. Yeah. Then uh, we can multiply a suitable power of f so that everything here will cancel out. So that we will only need a very very large power of f. We will be able to write one equals to a sum into uh, f to a large power divided by one is equal to a sum of uh, something times the power of f divided by one. Then, just by that, how, how equality works in localized ring, we can say that uh, for another big power of f m, f to the power of m times f to the power of n equals to f, f to the power of m times the the, the, the sum that is in the numerator. And uh, we can readily see that because this G is always in P, so this whole thing will always be in P, which means F will be in P. That's the contradiction we're looking for. Then I think we will just play the same trick again. <laughs> so if, if we write X1 as a, uh, as a fraction and X2 also as a fraction, then the, the then their um, then their uh, then their multiplication is also a fraction, so we can write this fraction again as a linear combination of things. Then again, we just uh, we just multiply by a very very big power of f n, and then we can uh, we can we can then write a one a two times some big power of f n is equal to uh, something times big power of f n addition then divide by one. So again, just by how equality in localized ring work, we again multiply by another, yet another very big power of, of, f, of f, we can get a1, a2 times some power of f is equal to some power of f times a sum. And again, we can see because gi is always in, is always in, in, in p, the right-hand side is always in p. So that means either a1 or a2 or f is in p, but uh, f is not in p, so at least one of a is in p. Then we will be checking continuity. So the prime spectrum also has a topological space of basic open sets. So to check that it is continuous, we just need to check it is continuous on on the all, on, on on the basic open sets. So a, ge a generic element in in the in the uh, in the degree zero ring is some is just some random fraction. So we will be looking at what is the pre-image of this run uh, of the basic open sets of at this fraction, and it turns out it's the pre-image is just uh, uh, the uh, the basic open set at f in the projective spectrum intersecting with the uh, uh, basic open set at a also in the projective spectrum. This notation can be a little bit confusing because here on the left hand side is in the prime spectrum. Uh, the, the the basic open sets are in the prime spectrum, and on the right hand side the uh, the the, the open sets are in the projective spectrum. 
and uh, uh, this equality holds. Uh, basically, we just check the left hand side is a subset of the right hand side and right hand side is a, a subset of left hand side. So if we start for, uh, with an element that is in the basic open set at F and also in the basic, basic open set at A, then uh, then we can again play in the same trick. We can write a divided by f to the power of n as a as a linear combination, and uh, just again just by multiplying uh, suitable powers of uh, of f n, we can again write a to the power of f n divided by one is a sum of uh, something to times f uh, powers of f. And then because this g is always uh, because then because of the presence of the g, we can always see uh, the left hand side is a times f to the power of uh, a times of well, f to the power of n is in in y. But since y is a member of this basic open set, then f is certainly not in y. So we can conclude that a is in y. And the other direction is easy because if h y is in is in the basic open set as a fraction. And uh, and a is in y, then then we must have that uh, the, the a, a divided by one is also in in h y. But this is a contradiction because a divided by f to the power of n is is always a to a divided by one times one uh, one divided by f to the power of n. Now we construct the the backward direction. So in this case, we will be having a prime ideal in the degree zero ring. Then we need to be constructing a relevant homogeneous prime ideal of uh, of the original ring A. So um, so we can define this here X is a prime ideal. So we can so we can define that uh, uh, the ideal is uh, uh, consists of the elements of the form A such that uh, A I is the ice coordinate of A such that uh, the ice coordinate of A times to the power of m divided by f to the power of i is in is always in X. And uh, there is a lot of work to do because we need to actually check this set is this random set is an ideal. We need to check this is homogeneous. We need to check this is prime. We need to check this is relevant, and we need to check this is continuous. So this is an ideal because first of all zero is in GX, and uh, if A and B are in GX, then their sum is in GX. If you try to just prove that uh, AI plus BI to the power of M divided by F to, uh, to the power of I is in GX, then there is, there is no program, then, then you, cannot make very, uh, you cannot make it very far. The correct way to do, it, to do that is actually you raise, it to, you raise it to a square, then check this square is actually in, the, uh, in GX. This, uh, so, so after we're squaring it, we can using uh, the binomial expansion to expand the numerator and writing it as a big sum. And, uh, and we can put a, de a denominator into the sum. And we can always, because j equals to, from j equals to zero to, uh, to two m, if m is smaller than j, then we can, we can, write, the, we can write this fraction into, uh, 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 we can split this fraction into two fractions. And uh, and then we will be having this uh, the the left the left hand the, the left one of these two fractions is actually uh, is actually in GX. This is because A is in GX, and uh, if uh, if M is not smaller than or equal to J, we can we can write we can split this fraction into another in, into another two fractions. Then then in this case we will also have the uh, left one uh, is in is in GX. This is because B is in GX. And uh, uh, then we need to uh, then we need to check if if b is in GX. Then whatever multiplied by g, uh, whatever multiplied by b is also in GX. So we can do a homogeneous induction on a. That means uh, uh, if if a if a is zero, then 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 the i's coordinates of a times b is also zero. And if a is homogeneous, that means a has uh, a has a degree. Then then a times b to the power. Uh, then then the i's coordinates of a b is just a times the the n minus i's coordinates of b. And uh, if the result holds for a one and a two, then then the result also holds for for uh, for a one plus a two times b. Then we need to check that uh, GX is homogeneous. But I, I just realized I never tell you what homogeneous means. <laughs> so homogeneous just means if A is in an ideal, then every coordinate of A will be in the homo homogeneous ideal. This is kind of trivial because 
if we want to check that uh, uh, the ice coordinates of A is in, is in GIX, then we are asking that for every J, the J's coordinates of the ice coordinates of A is in, is in GIX, but the J's coordinates of the ice coordinates of, of A is just either AI or zero, depending on whether I was J or not. And then we have to check that uh, GX is actually prime. So for a prime ideal, uh, for, a prime, uh, for a homogeneous ideal, the prime condition actually is equivalent to homogeneous prime, which means that P is prime, if and only, first of all, P is not the whole thing. And for every two homogeneous elements, if their product is in, is in P, then either uh, one homogeneous element is in P or the other one is in P. And uh, uh, one is not in uh, is not in G X. This is because the zeros coordinates of one is one, which is not in which is uh, which is not in uh, G X, because we have already proved that G X is not the whole thing. And uh, for the other uh, for for the other thing, we need to check for two homogeneous elements, say with degree i and j. Then suppose uh, we prove the counterposition of the proposition. So suppose a and b are not in G X which means at least one of the uh, coordinates you raise it to, a pro to, to M's power, it will not be in X. And uh, uh, same, for, same for B, uh, one of the coordinates of B, you raise it to the power of M, then it is not, uh, then take a fraction, then it is not in X. Then, uh, then, we, will, then, then we can see that uh, uh, the, this, this, normal, this, this abnormal in the, uh, coordinates must be I. For otherwise, uh, zero won't be in X, but but X is an ideal, right? So zero is always in X. Similarly, this J must uh, this K must be J. So then we can just, then we can see that uh, 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 for for the for the I plus J's coordinates of A times B, you, you raise it to the power of M, it will not be in X because because the the left the left one and the right hand the, the right hand one is are both not in X. Then we need to check that GX is actually relevant, which means we need to check that the, the irrelevant ideal uh, is, is not the whole thing. It's, just, it's, not, it's not entirely contained in GX. Let's just assume it is entirely contained in GX. Then, uh, then, 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 F, then F won't be in GX for otherwise, uh, because, because we, we, uh, we assume that F is homogeneous. So the M's coordinate of M is, uh, the M's coordinate of F is just F itself. So one will be in X, but uh, X is not the whole thing because X is prime. And, uh, uh, and also F will be, uh, also F is in, in the relevant ideal because F has the zeros coordinate as zero. So, 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 so we can, so, so because we assume that, uh, uh, this the, the this GX is, is irrelevant. So if F is in the irrelevant ideal, then F is also in GX. But uh, we but no, we, F is both in GX and not in GX. That's the contradiction. Then we need to uh, compute the uh, the backward and the forward actually composed to identity. Uh, so identity here just means uh, set theoretically they, they are the same set. So we first need to check uh, apply G then apply H is a subset of X. This is because if uh, this is because if if z is in the left hand side, then z is in the span uh, is in the span. So we play the same trick again. We just write z as a linear combination. And uh, uh, let me see what's going on here. Yeah, and uh, no, we can see because x is uh, because. Uh, because ci to the power of m uh, divided by f to the power of mki is in x. This is because uh, uh, this is because uh, this is this is because ci is in gx. That's the definition of g. So 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 this fraction is actually another fraction's uh, m's power. And because x is prime, so we will know this thing is always uh, is always in x. And. Uh, for the other direction, we need to prove that uh, X is smaller than uh, H applied to G applied to X. This is because if you take some fraction in X, then, uh, uh, then, then A is in GX because, uh, the ice pro uh, because the ice coordinate raised to M's power uh, is uh, 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 the, the ice coordinate raised to M's power is equal to an M's power of another fraction. And uh, since X is again prime, uh, then, then we then we can see 
a divided by after the pole of x is uh, is uh, a, a divided by pole a divided by pole after the pole of k is in x. Let me just read it again. I'm a little bit lost actually. Uh, Yeah, 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 I see. So actually, here we need to split into two cases because if i is equal to mk, then we have, we have, we have the equality here. Otherwise, we will just have zero, but uh, zero is actually easier to, to deal with. Yeah. Then we need to check that g, uh, g composed with h is also identity. And uh, uh, so, so we need to first of all check that G applied to H applied to X is smaller than, than X itself. So if Z is in G applied to H applied to X, then uh, uh, then, then, then every I's coordinate, you raise it to a suitable power, then divided by a power of F will be in H of X. So because H of X is a span, we write this fraction as a linear combination. And then again, we, uh, we, we just multiply, uh, we just multiply a suitable power of F. We will get Z to the, uh, the, the I's coordinate raised to, to a, a prop, raised to some power times some power of F is, uh, is something times power, power of F, then you add them together. And, uh, uh, and this, because CI is, uh, because DJ is always in, in X, this whole thing will always be in X, but F is not in X. So we can conclude that ZI is in X. For the other direction, if uh, we want to prove that if Z is in X, then, 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 then Z is in G applied to H applied to X. So we need to check that for every I's coordinates of, of Z. Uh, 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 yeah, so if Z is in X, because we assume X is homogeneous, we will know the I's coordinate of, of Z is also in X. Then we can write the fraction as a, uh, uh, as to uh, as the multiplication of two fractions, and because and uh, and because uh, z, z, zi divided by one is in uh, uh, zi because zi divided by one is in hx, this uh, this thing will be in hx as well. So now we know that the forward direction and the backward direction are both bijective. We use we will we'll use this bijectivity to prove continuity. Again, we uh, we will need to check the pre-image of, uh, uh, of of basic open sets are uh, uh, are open. So uh, because they, we, we are restricting proj to a basic open set, then the basis will be having. Uh, uh, so the basis is is of the form uh, the basic open set df intersecting another basic open set, and uh, uh, and we we can actually prove that. Uh, the image of this, uh, the intersection of these two basic open sets, is a uh, uh, is a union of uh, of the image of df intersecting uh, the the basic open set at the ice ice coordinate of a, and uh, then we will just meet. Then we will just need to check each of the each of the intersection of basic open sets are uh, are, are open, and uh, this thing is open is because. Uh, the, the image is actually another open, basic open set in the uh, in, in in the in the prime spectrum, and uh, to, to the way to see that the, the way to see uh, the way to see the the image of uh, of intersecting intersection of projective spectrum is a is a prime spectrum is an open basic open set in the prime spectrum. Uh, we just need to prove that uh, the pre-image. Uh, we just need to prove that the pre-image of the right hand side is actually uh, the intersection of two, the, the intersection of two, two basic open sets. Here, there should be a, a, a subscript i, and uh, this is ex exactly what we proved to when we were proving proving continuity of h. And uh, and so we will fin we will be finishing if we uh, if if we if we can if we actually know that uh, the pre image of the intersection under G. Is the image of uh, is the image under F, and uh, we can just use uh, uh, the bijectivity to do this. So now we have uh, we have proven the topo the two topological spaces are uh, are homeomorphic. Then we need to prove that uh, the, the the push forward of the structure sheaf of proj restricting to open basic open sets uh, is uh, is isomorphic to the to to to, to the structure sheaf of uh, the prime spectrum. 
So to do this, we will, we will need for every, uh, for every open set in the prime spectrum, we will need a ring homomorphism from, uh, uh, we will need a ring homomorphism from the, uh, from the sections in the pre-image of, uh, of U and the H to the, uh, to the sections in, in, in U. This is just the definition of push forward. So, so for every, so an element in the, so, so an element in, so a section in, in the, uh, so a section on the pre-image of H is just dependent functions that are locally fractions. So, uh, and a section in the in the degree zero ring is degree zero ring again uh, is a dependent function taking value in a, a twice localized ring. So uh, for every so for every x in the open set U, because g x uh, we can prove that g x is in the pre image of uh, of U, then we then we can actually uh, we can actually look at the value of g x under this this section S. And uh, because this section, because this value is uh, is some fraction in the uh, is is some is some is some fraction, so we can take the numerator and denominator out, and we can uh, we, we can set that uh, 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 the destination of we will be sending s to the function that uh, for any given x, <laughs> this twice localized thing. So the numerator is n times d to the power of minus one divided by f to the power of i. And the denominator is d to the power of m divided by f to the power of i. This is the first time we will be using the, the m is actually positive. And uh, once we check that this is well defined to prove that this is actually a, a, a morphism of, of sheaves, is, is this, this uh, commutative diagram is very easy to check. I think basically SIMP will do that. Did someone write something? And uh, now we check that this is a ring homomorphism. So we'll be checking that it sends one to one and sends addition to addition, sends multiplication to multiplication. This is just very tedious uh, chasing down fractions, but uh, someone has to do it, I suppose. So, uh, so, uh, Let's let's just take the uh, uh, the function one and uh, suppose that uh, S G one has the value n, n divided by d and uh, n and d are uh, uh, both have degree i and uh, then because uh, then there will be some c that is not in the uh, is not in G one such that n c equals to d c this is just the, the definition of equality in, in localized ring and since G is not in G one then there is some coordinate of G, then there is some coordinate of C such that uh, the, the J's coordinate raised to a suitable power divided by F to the power of J is not in X. This is, this is definition of G. Then we can see that the I plus J's coordinate of N times C equals to the D plus, I plus J's coordinate of D times C equals to N times to the I, J's coordinate of C. This is because N is homogeneous. And uh, this is uh, also equals to D times the J's coordinate of C. This is again, because D is also a homogeneous element. Then we can just uh, chase down this big fraction. You will, you will find that uh, the left-hand side is actually uh, equals to uh, right-hand side. So we, so, so we will know that one gets this, is sent to one. And similarly, just by, checking, by, by chasing another simpler fraction, you will, we can see that zero is sent to zero. I think my computer died. Uh, at least my keyboard died. So then we need to check that it sends addition to addition. <laughs> this is a horrible fraction to chase down. <laughs> so let's let's just say S1 sends GX to N1 times the divided by D1, and N1 D1 has degree I1. And uh, S2 sends GX to N2 divided by D2, and N2, uh, N2 D2 has the degree uh, I2. Then let, let's say that S plus S2 send GX to N12 divided by D12, so, and uh, N12 uh, D12 has degree I12. So our goal is just to check this, <laughs> this, 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 um, this fraction, which has like four floors. <laughs> and uh, because we know that A12 divided by D12 equals to a, a N1 divided by D1 plus N2 divided by D2, and uh, 
the addition equals to N1 D2. So the addition equals to N1 D2 plus N2 D1 divided by D1 D2. So just by how equality works, we, we can find the C not in GX such that N1 to D1 D2 C equals to right-hand side. And again, because uh, the definition of G, we, we know that some coordinate of G, uh, some coordinate of C is not well behaved. And uh, <laughs> so let's just say the J's coordinate is not well behaved. Then the I1 plus I2 plus I1 two plus J's coordinate uh, uh, using uh, using uh, using using the I1 plus I2 plus I, I1 two plus the J's coordinate, we can actually see uh, uh, N12. N12 D1 D2 times the J's coordinate of C. This is actually because this thing has, uh, N12 has degree I12, uh, D1 has degree I1, and D2 has degree uh, I2. So we, so we can finally check these two fractions are equal. Actually, the, the hard part in formalization will not be actually chasing down the, uh, the, uh, the fractions, just naming them will be, <laughs> will be quite hard. There are lots of variables. And uh, similarly, one can check that, uh, this, uh, this, this phi actually sends multiplication to multiplication and uh, the fraction is actually easier to chase down because addition, you, you, you end up with this, but for multiplication, you just end up with uh, uh, N1, N2 divided by D1, D2. So that's a little bit easier. And uh, we then need to check this phi is actually locally a fraction of things. And uh, we will be using that, uh, uh, I mean, the, the phi u of s is actually a locally, uh, is a locally, is locally a fraction. We will be using that s is actually locally a fraction. So, which means uh, for every x in, in u, there will be some neighborhood of x such that g of x uh, is, is always locally a fraction. So we can, uh, so, so we can, so, so on this v, as will always give us it divided by b for some for, for, for some homogeneous elements a and b. Then we can check that uh, uh, for 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 every z in the image of h uh, in the image of uh, v and the h, uh, this uh, the uh, phi phi of s will uh, when a, when we apply phi of s to z, we get that uh, it is uh, on this set, it is always a times b to the power of minus one divided by b to the power of m. So it is a really a local layer fraction. So we have finished the forward direction. Now we look at the backward direction. <laughs> so for the backward direction, we will be having open sets in the prime spectrum. So we will be needing a, a ring homomorphism starting from the sections on U, and we want some we want some sections in uh, in the uh, on the pre image of U. So a section in, in on in the structure a section on U is a a section on U uh, given a section on U and uh, uh, and some Y. Because HY will be in U, so we can actually see what's the value of HY and the, and the S. Say that HY, uh, the value of HY is actually A divided by B. Uh, and a, this A and B are two fractions, just remember that. <laughs> so we can write A and B as their, uh, uh, and their, with their respectively, their numerator and denominator. So we can then finally set uh, phi of s, psi of s of y should be equal to the numerator of a times the denom uh, times uh, the, de the the denominator of uh, of b to the power of i. Uh, here, the, this b should be should, should be here, and uh, the the denominator is the, the is the numerator of b times f to the power of degree of uh, of, of a. And again. The, the, the commutative diagram is very easy to check. You just use him. So we'll be checking it since one to one, since, since zero to zero, since addition to addition, since, since multiplication to multiplication. I, I think in this direction is slightly easier. So, uh, so uh, if we have A and B two fractions, we uh, then, then we, we can, then for some, uh, then for some c, c divided by f to the l is not uh, is not in h h y. Then um, then for some n one, let me 
this, this is again just by how 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 equality in, in localized ring works. We can just uh, we, we can we can just have this uh, this inequality this equality. So yeah, so so yeah, so so checking that it sends one to one is quite straightforward. Similarly, for sending zero to zero. And then we need to check that it sends multiplication to multiplication. So we straight, so we strictly just write everything in in the numerators and denominators. So, uh, so so we will have that. Uh, uh, we need to press the green button. So so we need to check that a one a two divided by after some after some some power divided by b one b two divided by after some power is equal to a one two divided by f some power divided by b12 divided by some f power then for some c divided by f uh, f to the power of l again this, this is just how equality works we will, we will get we will get uh, we'll get just uh, we'll get another equality of fractions then again just by how how equality in localized in localized ring works we'll uh, we'll get this final final equality here then we can use this equality to prove that uh, to, to prove to prove what we want. So this is, uh, and, and to prove that uh, uh, it sends addition to addition is similar, but harder. And to prove that uh, this is locally a fraction, uh, we will again, by using that this S is locally a fraction, albeit a fraction of fractions. Uh, so, so, so we can see that on, uh, on inverse image of H, uh, uh, phi of s of y is sent to is always being sent to a times f to the power of l two divided by b times f to the power of l one. Then the pen is almost over because now we just need to check that they compose the same thing, the backward forward compose the identity. So, given a fraction, uh, given a section on on the pre image of u. Uh, then we want to then phi. Just a reminder, phi u of s. Is uh, phi of s is send uh, send x to 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 this fractional fraction where s of x equals to n divided by d. So uh, just by unfolding the definition, we can we can actually see you, you apply psi and apply phi, you will get n times d times uh, n times d to the power of minus one times f to some power divided by d times uh, d to the power of m uh, the times f to some power is equal to n, n divided by d, which is just uh, uh, s x. And finally, if we have a section on U, then just a reminder, phi U of S, phi U of S and X to, uh, 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 phi U of X and X to, 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 to this fraction, where S of X is this fractional fractions. Then just by unfolding the definitions, we can see phi U of psi U of S of X is this double fraction. And just by checking the double equality, you can see that this double fraction will end, the, end it up to be just as, a, as of x. So this is how we construct proj as a scheme. I mean, the, 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 the mass is just uh, very tedious to check, but there, there is no really hard thing. So you're talking over. Yeah. Is that really, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> 